talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely. Official Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Not, not my dad walk on. Man, hey man, listen man, we got a special guest in here today, man. I'm going to be honest with you, when I say special, a lot of times I be I just be tripping. But today is special, I ain't going to lie to you, to me. You know, when it's special to me, it's a whole nother level of special. Mm-hmm. Check it, man, we got my boy, man, the legendary man, Ronnie Spencer is in the building. What's going on, my brother? Nothing much, man. Just taking it easy, taking it day by day. I man. Like hey, man, you know, uh, yeah, I could write a book about what I've been going through, but I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, what's up with you, man? You, you, Hey, I like that shirt. Thank you, thank you. Man. I made it. Yeah. I made it. <laughs> I know my daughter going to want one of those. Oh, man, she knows. She, hey, man, when she came here the other week, man, hey, she, I fell in love with her. I followed them all the way to Oak Cliff, man, wherever they want me to go. Whatever y'all want to do, we shut down. We jumped in the truck and followed them. Yeah. Oh, that's, love. that's a lot of love. Because they wanted that um, Dallas chicken, so we yeah, had to take them to over to Rudy's. Yeah, they wanted to check out the chicken spot. Dallas chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got a chicken spot called Rudy's Chicken, man. Shout out Rudy's Chicken, man. Man, well, Rudy, I got to come see y'all. <laughs> What I'm hearing right now, it must be some good chicken. Man, that's it's what everybody salty. say. But I like it. I like he it. He loved the salt. I like it. It's not mm-hmm. real salty. They just they they not from the country. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When you're from the country, you 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 know everything uh, salty. Everything salt and pepper and Lyra seasoning. You know okay. she Jamaican. So oh. they, <laughs> <laughs> say, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Yeah, anytime. Man, I sure appreciate it, man. Hey, man, hey, this legendary for me anyway because I'm a big fan, man, and man, I've been listening you. to you for a long time and didn't even realize. I didn't even going realize on. it. Why you always got to put that out there? <laughs> Don't make me look bad. I mean, it, I remember I, driving down the road listening to that song. We were doing research on Renetta. And that song came up with because he's a big pimp, pimp oh, yeah, fan, a pimp like oh, huge pimp C yeah. fan. Bad, yeah, that's and bad. And that song You're came bad, on, bad. and he was like, "No, let's look up another song of his and see." And we matching the voices to try to you see if it like was Ron really Isley. you. I thought it was Ron Isley. <laughs> that's what I thought. He could not believe it. I thought it was Ron like, Isley. I'm telling you what I thought. Everybody think it was Ron Isley, but now I'm gonna tell you. The, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something that they don't realize. It was a Rona Osley song. Ah. Oh. Really? That's and why you got world, me. Yeah, the world don't know. So the song is called, it's on the Live It Up album. Uh-huh. Okay. And the song is called Ain't I Been Good To You by okay. Rona Osley. And what I did was just rewrote the words and sung it the way that I felt, you know, that I felt that like you it, felt like it needed, it needed to, be. to be. You feel and uh, cuz music talk to you. So right. if you just sit down and listen to the track, you can pretty much you know know pretty much what to say on the on the song if you listen real good. Man, I tell you when I when I first heard it. This was in 19 I believe 95. I'm going to say 95, 94. Whenever it came out, that Riding Dirt album. 96. 96. I know it was somewhere, right. I, I, look, because I, you know, I, I ain't going to tell y'all my age, but, you know, I kind of remember when rap first started, nigga, so don't, don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> when it first started out, like, when it wasn't no, you know, it was just R&B and me. Mm-hmm. I was good and, with and, that, too. And when rap yeah. first started, it was a Jamaican who started it, right? No, nah, we don't want right? to go there. This is the part I don't like right there. You know, it, it, this is what I get. They say that a, a Jamaican started rap. Uh-huh. And, 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 the, and oh I researched God. it what and they said, name? yeah. Yep. Well, I was mad about that, man. I can might be wrong, but I thought rap came out. Uh, Sugar Hill Gangs? No, I no. think I think rap started, and this young particular man was is real good. He go by the name of Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield. When, when he first did, uh, I'm your mama. I'm yeah, your yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, so, DJ Cool Herc. Look. He's, yeah, he's Jamaican, DJ Cool Herc. But what you just said, so come you on, go- tell your story. When you Google, that, when you Google it, it said it. <laughs> yeah. It, it said Google, it Google, 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 Google the line. Tell no, me about no. what you about to say about Curtis <laughs> Mayfield. I mean, Mayfield was the one to me. Yeah. I could be wrong, but Mayfield is the one to me that really got people to kind of jumping on rap because he kind of did singing rap. Okay. And, you know, actually I did a song over with Mayfield, but See that? Mm. it's like, uh, then that's when I guess the Sugar Hill Gang and all, all the other ones start coming, start up. coming up with, you know, with rap music and then boom, I think it just blowed up. But, you know, 
the real hip hop artists out there. Maybe I shouldn't say it like that. Was like Careless One and yeah, all yeah, yeah, that. yeah. That yeah. was real hip hop. They was real, the original. You know the original stuff out there. So I got to give it to the New York people. They was mm-hmm. they was on it. You know, for as so do we, do we want to you want to go back? Yeah, I know you so always mess yeah, with people. Like, she got I this like thing she do. No, because a lot of times I like to go back in someone's history because a lot of times when people get to know each other, know themselves really, they go through the ups and downs, and that can help a lot of our viewers to know that they're going through something that you already went through and how you overcame it. You right. see what I mean? Yeah, I so tell me about you before the music. Well, I was a church boy, you mm-hmm. know, mama kept me in church. So, you know, I sung in the choir, I sang Emmanuel, and uh, I just used to walk around the house and sing, you know. And, and how uh, old were you at that time? Six. <laughs> wow. Uh, six and just don't, didn't know I was singing. Just Did you get it from your mama? Uh, my mama did play in a band okay. at uh, 4212 Alameda, Mitchell's Lounge back in Houston. They did have a band back there. And okay, so play. you... So I guess that's where I, I got my singing from. Mm-hmm. Uh, playing instruments, my daddy played a B3 Hammond organ. So I, you know, picked a lot of stuff up from him, like the hats and stuff like that, because <laughs> it was all back in the day. That's all they wore was, you know, dog godfathers and mm-hmm. hats like that. They all dressed up and kept me coats and stuff on. So oh yeah, I just Tom Walkers, man. I just yeah, I just yeah, I just picked it up. <laughs> and were you raised in the house with your mom and your dad? I was raised in the house with my mom. I was more of a mama boy than I was a dad boy. So okay. I was raised with my mama. You know, she had four of us. So it's three boys and one girl. My lovely sister by the name of Rachel Spencer. My oldest brother, Richard Spencer. And my other brother, Rawton Barrett. He the only one had the last name of my father, but everybody else had Spencer. So okay, mm-hmm. okay. So you fell in the middle of all of those kids. I'm the, I'm the baby boy. The baby boy. It's the baby oh, boy. so you the spoiled... I'm Whoa. Spoiled, I'm gonna Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You the spoiled brat. Go on and say Whoa. Whoa. You say the spoiled brat. Yeah. That's why he was a mama's boy. Mama's she must have been boy. a play by that boy, not that little one. No, mm-hmm. Just like you. Same thing. It's just a different time. <laughs> <laughs> she can't say nothing you got on that one. I got her. I already know, man. So uh, just when you was coming up, when did you realize, like, I'm going to do music professionally? Was that later on? That was later on. That was later on. I used to play a lot of sports. Played a lot of Played bas- football, yeah, basketball? Yeah, yeah, basketball. And that's how I really got discovered on the basketball court. Really? So, Were you singing yeah, on the basketball court? I was used to sing and, and shoot the ball in the hoop and no. laugh at it. Ooh. And I got so good at it to people was like, uh, he can't, man, he can't do this. And then there's a guy, it's a guy by the name of Al D. Okay. Really uh, used to always tell me, hey, man, when I, I do my album, I, you got to be on it. I want you to sing on it. I said, okay, no problem. At first, I thought he was, you know. Joking. Joking, but he never was joking. He was serious. So one day, we was playing. We had a big basketball meeting out there. There's a bunch of us playing basketball. And uh, this uh, limousine pulled up. Mm. And it was uh, two big guys got out of it. Um, we still playing basketball. And I'm winning. And I'm instead of shooting the ball and singing on them. And, and they was just standing there looking. And then... Uh, one of the guys say, say, man, you know these guys right over here? I said, no. So uh, Al D, you know, he had told him where I was and this type of stuff. And uh, say, man, we jammed down records. And uh, we need you on a project. Uh, we got a project that we're doing with Al D. We just signed him, and he wants you on his album. And I was like, oh, man, I was just playing games. You know, I, I didn't take it serious. So he said, well, man, I got a... Three thousand dollars, man. I, that money you know, make you take it serious, yeah, real quick. I got three thousand dollars, man. I, he really wants you on the song. Uh, if you want to do it, I mean, that's what we'll pay you. You know. Mm-hmm. By then, I didn't know nothing about music. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know. You know, I just said okay. When you said three racks, I said okay. I, See let's that go. money? Yeah, that money. <laughs> so, I even got in the limousine uh-huh. and, and talked to these cats. And he said, well, man, we'll take you to your house. You can follow us. I said, okay, cool. And I was right around the corner from the park. And That's I cool. followed them off a of telephone road and jam down studio. And uh, they played a song called Let Me Blow. That's the name of the song that I got on on the mm-hmm. album. The name of the album was Home of the Free. And that's your first one. And that was my first song. Mm-hmm. So I did the song, and, and, and they loved it. It took me probably about five minutes. And, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I really don't know what I'm doing because 
there in the studio and you got engineers and they just kept saying putting their thumb up i said okay i guess that's that's it so he said yeah and how old were you at that time i was about Probably about 20, 21, 22, okay. around that area, I guess, around in that area. Okay. And um, the song blew up. And I'm like, man, you know, so I guess I do sound good. I but guess how I did like you that. feel the first time you heard the song on the radio? When I heard the song on the radio, I was amazed about it. I was like, man, is that really me? Because, you know, radio, they put another sound to, to you know, your voice. Mm-hmm. So, I start sounding professional. I said, you know, I'm professional, so I gotta, you know, I gotta check into this. So it blowed up, and then, uh, you know, I had been knowing Screw, mm-hmm. and uh, he he got the song. He said, man, you sound so good on that song. I got a lot of work for you. I said, okay, cool. We was cool, you know. We both DJs, so. So you so DJ'd okay. at first. That, yeah. That's what I was about yeah. to ask. What so were D- you doing at that time, career-wise, before I was, that? I was DJing at Alameda Skating Ring. Mm. Okay. And uh, everybody was calm. The place used to be packed on Sundays. And Sundays mm-hmm. we probably have about 12, 1,300 people in that skate. The skate ring was big was back big, then. big back then. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, everybody listened to grooves and hip hop and rap. And, you know, Screw was doing his thing. He was slowing up music. and you know, Yeah, yeah, stuff, so. yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, you know, and I would play the song and they would, they would skate to it. And I'm like, okay, I, I think I'm going to be something here. So what I used to do, I used to always sing. And uh, I would play songs like Osley Brothers, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, and I would be singing with the song while they're skating. Wow. And they wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. Wow. Because I could change my voice like that. They wouldn't know. I would have turned it off one one time, just one time, and just start singing just to see the response. Well, it was a young lady like yourself (laughs) skating, and she stopped. And she kind of got over in a corner, and she was just watching me. And she... Come up there and she said, You really singing this song? I said, Yeah. She said, I think you need to sing professionally, but she never knew that I did the song with Al D. Yeah. And she would skate to it. She never knew it, but she thought it was Ron Isley. See, that's what so, I'm telling you, man. So, so I it just, tricked me. Yeah, it just kept going and going. And so one day she told a lot of people in the skate ring, Ronnie's singing up there, man. That ain't y'all tripping. He's singing up there. And I said, Oh, man. I said, Man, next Sunday y'all watch. He gonna be singing, and I never knew she had told, told him that. People. So it's a couple of Ron Isley songs come on. I got to going hard, you know. I'm, I'm singing. I play. I think I played "Smooth Sailing" by Ron Isley. It did. Mm-hmm. And, and man, it, the song come on, and it's just going. And so I got into it. You know, so she looked up and she called me, "Nothing but smooth sailing tonight." So I just kept singing it, and the next thing I know, everybody stopped skating. <laughs> And they ain't looking at me. (laughs) And I'm so off into the music, you know, I'm not paying them attention. And then all of a sudden, they just start clapping. And when they clapped, I raised up. I said, oh, man, these people. This is crazy. This is crazy. Did you get nervous at that time? That's when I got nervous. I said, oh, man, this is crazy. And I I couldn't get the smile off my face. And they was like, man, you sound so good, man. We thought that was uh, was Ronald Ozzy, but... I played the instrumental. No, no. Yeah, wow. and went in. And, and see, then you. But see, the only instrumental on Smooth Sailing, they have the background on there. Yes. But they don't have the lead part. So I did the lead part. Right. So when the background came in, I knew they would know it was the Osley Brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but by me not knowing that I sound so identical like him, they was amazed. They was just stopped and just. Stop skating. So, I'm, so when they start clapping, I'm like, everybody ain't skating no more. <laughs> they was listening to me. They were listening uh-huh. at you. And I had so many people come to the booth. And man, I, I want you to do this on my album. I, and you never knew. I never knew of so many people in there that was doing projects, mm-hmm. albums, and and I was just it was amazing. I'm like, man, this is crazy. So that's, wow, that's that's crazy. So how long after that did you meet? Um, uh, how did you end up linking with uh, UGK? UGK uh, heard Al D's album. Okay. And uh, he was going to do some stuff with Screw. Okay. And he Pimp asked, C? Yeah, Pimp C was. He was going to do some stuff with Screw. So he said, Screw, man, who is this Who is this guy sound like the, the Osley brothers? So Screw said, that's my god dad. He said, no, man. He said, yeah. Can you get him? He said, yeah, call him. He'll come right over. As a matter of fact, he just left. Wow. He said, man, I got a song. So he played the song, Ain't I Been Good to You by the Osley Brothers. Okay. And uh, 
I listened to it. I said, yeah, I know that whole song, you know. So he said, uh, well, man, uh, I got a track that I want you to do. And he had sampled the Live It Up song. I mean, Ain't I Been Good To You on the Live It Up album. Okay. And I said, yeah. He said, you think you can do something with that? I said, sure. I said, but don't, don't play it because I don't want to get in trouble with Ronald. I say, we'll come up with the right words and, you know, I can kind of, you know, do it. He said, okay. So it took me about five minutes. And I, uh, I sung what I thought would go on the track. Yeah, and they loved it. UGK mm. loved it. They jumped. They said, "Man, let's 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 record it. Let's go to Skip Holman in the morning and record it." So I said, "Okay." So when he said Skip Holman, I'm, I'm thinking it's just a a studio in a house or something like that. But when I got out there, it was a million dollar studio. Ooh, wow. So now I get nervous. I'm like, "Whoa, man, what is this, man? This man had a mixing console, probably wall to wall in there, probably over." Oh, 150 tracks on the board. So I'm like, okay, this is the big league. This wow. is wow. You like I, this is I gotta you this, know I, this, what, is this is what they shooting yeah, for. Yeah, man. So now I kind of get a little cocky, and I say, so all right. So I'm singing the song, so everybody's telling me how to do it. So now I realize now this is the one. The one. This nope. is one day. Yeah. yeah. So I realized that man, uh, you can't sing. You can't sing. Y'all, y'all trying to tell me how to sing. Exactly. So Skip Holman said, I like that. Can everybody get out of the studio and let him do what he do? Pimp, she said, that's the best thing to do. Let him do him. So I like hard. that. So I, I, I did the song, and uh, it was like in probably about three or four minutes, I finished the song. That's and, cool. Uh, they was all gone to lunch, and when they came back, it was a wrap. I was sitting outside by the pool, and I hear all this screaming and hollering and jumping, man, and... They all come outside and say, man, come back up. I said, what's going on? I said, y'all don't like it? He said, no, it's a hit. We love it. So I'm like, okay, I guess it's going to be official. Well, some kind of way that song got out. Okay. You know, because they mouse it right then. Some kind of way that song got out. And me and Pimp ride, and we going home, and, and the song come on the radio. That same day? That same day. That's one thing. Um, I don't know. Renetta was saying thing. something like that about, yeah. which one, which song was it? Uh, Bar Baby. Bar Baby. Bar that yeah. it came out and like that too. Yeah. And it nobody just, does that anymore, not in the same day. Yeah. How how does that, how well, is that guys, possible? Man, these guys was professional. They I mean, get they knew how to put them, do them, play, call yeah. it playlists now. And, and, and Pimp <laughs> was just <laughs> incredible in the studio working with him. So he already pretty much knew what he wanted. Oh, so you know, and, and him and Bumby uh, was incredible. That's all I can say about those guys. Special Bumby, he was type of guy he could write his verse and read it and ball it up and throw it in trash, go to sleep mm. and wake up. Pimp say, "Bum, go go lay your verse," and he go one take and it's done. Mm. So he he was one of the guys that I first seen do that, and I was like. That young man is amazing. That young man got a gift. So wow. I always said Bond was for his time because he was so good with words and uh, he could write write stuff and just kill it. Man, kill it. You want that one day? You want to hit that one? <laughs> Please. <laughs> one day? Y'all, yeah. you, you, want, you want to hear the acapella? You want to hear acapella. the music? Or acapella. Do you wanna, All right. Do you you wanna... know I wanted acapella. Don't do that. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you wanted it with an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear your voice. You want to hear my voice? Okay, here yes. it is. I'm going to do it for Boss Talk 101. Hey. Here it is. Fool, one day you hear, and then you're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day you hear, baby. And then you're gone. One day you hear, baby. And then you're gone. Man, man. Hey, man. See, you made a tear come Listen, to my man. eye. Don't do boy, that. Boy, I used to be in that old, in that old Cadillac I had, boy. I was mm -hmm, coming out mm -hmm. through there, boy, when I had that thing rumbling. <laughs> you don't understand, man. Say, when I come through there... Man, you couldn't tell me nothing, man. I, and I was gonna get in some trouble back then. You gonna get in oh, some man. Trouble, man! Oh yeah, you know I was I was a young cat then, you know. So uh, yeah, I was going to jail or something that day. Oh, your, <laughs> your voice is and this it it <laughs> I'm speechless. But it it comes down in your in Renetta. Her voice was just so effortless Different, when she man. sang. It was just so effortless, and that's the same thing with your voice. You hit those notes, and it's like there's no fault in your voice. No. Thank you. Thank so I'm like, 
when did you realize that you passed it down in your gene to her? When she was born. Now, this is the craziest thing. When she was born, I was really waiting to see because I wanted a, either a boy or a girl. Yeah. And it really, really true, I wanted a boy. I already know. And I said, like, I want a boy. I said, I don't want a girl. So I <laughs> <laughs> and and when, she, when her mother was pregnant, she said, well, well, we having a girl. I said, I don't want a girl. You can have her. <laughs> And I didn't hold Ronella for like six months. Really? So I was really serious. I wanted to do it. I said, I want a boy because I ain't got to worry about nobody. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, with yeah. Him. And uh, one, when she when she was born, instead of her hollering when the doctor spanked her, she hit a note. No. Wow. Yeah. She hit really? A, yeah, she hit a note. That scream was so unique. And my ears just rested. I say, That's how you my daughter finna sing. I got to sing it. So I started running around. Man, I got to sing. I got to sing. So now they looking. So they said, we thought you didn't want a girl. I ain't mean, giving my baby, man. Like, she, so this, she, she got it. And everybody was looking at me like I was retarded. And nobody said, heard it but they, you. Nobody heard it but me. Or recognized it, really. So one day, she started doing all the stuff. So when I sing, sometimes I beatbox. And yeah. don't know I'm doing it. Wow. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, and I'll show you all that in a minute. Mm -hmm. I sing and don't know I'll be doing it. And when I heard her, she just come to me and she say, Daddy, and she did say, I say, what's up? She say, look at this, A, B, C, See? and I passed out. <laughs> that's what I used to do. When you were younger. When I was younger. So wow, I said, and she I didn't said, even know that. That put it on the hot line. I and said, how she, old was she at that time? She was like about mm, four. Okay. So I'm like, she kind of made a beat. While she was singing, I thought I was on one. Wow. And when I recorded one day, No D is the one of the producers say, man, he beatbox when he sing. And when Skip Holman, he say, take all the music out and just play around his vocals. So when he did, that's what was going on when I was singing one wow. day. Wow. So they cleaned it all. I said, we got to clean all of that because he beatbox. They thinking it's an instrument. No say, no, man, he, he, uh, Beatbox when he sings. You've been doing it ever since you was little. And I still do it as today and don't know when I'm doing it. You don't realize it. I don't realize it. It becomes a habit. So what it was, like the snare is probably on the one or the two or, you know, the four downbeat. I always was on the one. And it would just come out when I do it. And that's what kept my count on the bars of music. Oh. Uh, the measures of the music. That's yeah. What, I got it. And they try for days. And don't, don't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. Because it, it was just natural. It was a natural wow. gift. So I've been doing it since I've been doing music. How did it sound? Give me a song. Give it's kind of like, uh, I'm going to sing the part that uh, on the new song that me and Ron Isley got. Yeah, I've been, I supposed to got that already. <laughs> yeah. so, the, so the name of this song is, um, it's an inspiration song. And it's called, uh, hell, I forgot. It's, <laughs> uh, it's been so long since I did it. Uh, you know, I'm gonna sing it. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing his part. Okay. And you might can hear it. Oh, excuse me. You might can hear it in in my voice. He's going. He say, uh, "Listen up, son. I heard you back in the day. It was a song by UGK. I think you call it one day. You're here, now you're gone. Oh, but life goes on. Cause the day you prayed for is the day we did this song. You gotta hold on, be strong, and never give up the fight. You gotta stay true to what you do. Everything gonna be all right. You gotta hold on, be strong, never give up the fight. You gotta stay true to what you do. Do, and everything gonna be all right. Boy, all boy, right. boy. Yeah. Man, you, Ronald Isley, and you sound, I couldn't you tell the difference, that song man. Out. Yeah, uh, we heard about gonna... you being romantic with it. That yes, way it was. We ain't letting nothing go. We got an archive full of it. You got an yeah. archive full of stuff, and you won't even give it to her. Yeah, I'm finna give y'all yeah. some stuff today. Yeah, I'm gonna give y'all some stuff today. And I told my because brother, that's yeah, yeah, you're romantic with it. I love because this hanging on to every word that you were saying, I believe, I'm like, I believe that it's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. So, I mean, and, I love it. And the part, the best part of that song we did the song name the song is hold on we did that song and my mother was living wow 
So she got a chance to, to hear, hear it. it. She got a chance to see some of the video footage of me and Ronnie in St. Louis, Missouri, at, wow. his, at his home in the studio. And to me, I know when I put it out, it's, it's going to be a touchy moment when I put that out mm -hmm. because she knew that's who I wanted to meet in me. my career. And you did. And I thank D Derek Dixon, d uh, for putting that together and make that happen with us. Uh, the song is done, it's mastered, and I just haven't released it. Run, run, run us through the, how, uh, through, through the that day, that day when you, right, when you when did you that met. with Ron when y'all went and made this well, happen. Well, it was it was crazy on that day because I was at home. Okay. I had just left the studio. I was at home, and I was chilling, looking at looking at me a little vampire picture, laughing. And, and I get a phone call and say, uh, hey, man, uh, this is Rick. I say, what's going on? You everything all right? He say, yeah, man, uh, Ron, Ron Osley is... is at the arena tower, he got a show tonight, and he want to meet you. And I said, oh, man, you playing? I hung the phone up. Quit playing, man. I hung the phone <laughs> up. So, you know, Sometimes them cats play a lot, you know, joke a lot. So, so he, he called again. He said, hey, man, you need to get ready. Uh, we need to have you at the arena. I said, man, what are you talking about, man? He said, I told you, Ron Osley want to see you, want to talk to you, want to hear you. He, he agreed to do the song. So I said, okay. So, uh. I said, well, all right, man, I guess I'll you know, get ready. He said, man, you need to hurry up because he's going he gonna to be performing probably around 7 o'clock, and they want to see you before they hit the stage. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, okay, man, all right. And the doorbell rung, and when I opened the door, it was a D-Rex. Wow. Mm. He outside. He said, man, I'm ready for you to come. So now I know it's serious. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, I'll be, I'll be downstairs in about five, ten minutes. I'm downstairs, <laughs> got cleaned up. And he said, no, you don't need to get clean. I don't want you to get clean. I just need you to come on now. We need to we go now. We just need your voice. So my mom said, get your ass out of here. <laughs> so I, said, right, so I, 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 I left. So we gone down the stairs. We get in the car. We go. And sure enough, in the arena theater tower, he was there. Mm -hmm. So it was him, Ernie Osley. Angela Winbush and a couple of more people. Then he had his wow, Angela he had his hairdresser there. He walking around in a fubu. Okay, you know he cape. always fly. Yeah, he fly. That's what I like about him. He in, he in his little fubu robe and in, in, in the hairdressers curling his hair as he walk. And he turned around and said, "All oh, I heard you sound like me." <laughs> that what you said. So I said, "I guess that's what they say." You know, I, you know. And he said, "Yeah, uh, that's what's been the talk in the town and talking." St. Louis, Missouri, that you wow. sound like me, and ain't nobody sound like me in 30 years. So I'm like, okay. So he said, well, since you sound like me, uh, let me hear some. Let me hear some. So I <laughs> guess they say? thought, I guess they thought I was just gonna, you know, freeze up. So I said, okay, what you want to hear? He said, anything. Then, 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 uh, Ernie say, do hello. So I say, hello. Mm. He said, yeah. I said, okay. I hit that thing, boy. <laughs> So they all standing there, Ernie playing with his guitar, you know, getting the tune for the So I'm like, okay, so all of a sudden, I said, right, here we go. Hello, 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 girl, hello, hello, oh. Hello, 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 hello. So he like, where's that? Wait, 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 wait a minute, man, wait a minute. So I said, oh, okay. So he say, oh, well, do, do smooth sailing. I said, nothing but smooth sailing tonight. If it, anything that you want from me, it's mine. I like tonight. So he said, wait, okay. Do, I said, stop. He said, man, stop. He said, man, stop. He said, man, stop. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, man, do summer breeze. Said, summer breeze. <laughs> and then he, he like, wait, now, hold up. So Angela say, uh, is that your son? <laughs> so I, 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 she, he said, no, Ron. I said, no, he's not my son. Oh. So, so Ernest said, man, you've been messing around. There's something, there's something you ain't telling us. It's, it's got to be your son because he's hitting every note. Right. That you hit. He sound identical. Man, this man is, is, is off the chain. Are you sure that ain't your son? I say, hmm. So he asked me, he say, oh, is that your dad? I said, no, my dad deceased. He passed. And they all looked at each other. He say, okay, let's do the song. We're going to do the song. Where you want to do the song at? I say, oh. We can do it uh, at your place. Wow. Because I was ashamed of my studio. I get it, I get it. So I said, I don't want him here. I, said, I want to go where the big boys at. So they all looked at me and said, so Ron said, it's cool, it's cool. And he was so, he was so, man, 
he was just so pleasant and just yeah you could tell he had a good heart wow uh -oh. and uh he said i'll tell you what he said how many plane tickets you need mm. so i say well no d d rick and me he said cool he said i will have y'all round trip flank plane tickets in about two weeks we can do it at my studio and that was the best news I could hear. Wow. So it's like my heart you was just fluttering. Oh, man, was just, yeah, my heart was just fluttering. I said, man, I don't believe this happening. And this is when I wish that I had my daughter and my mom with me. But, yeah. you know, it, it was just so, it happened so, so quick. quick. And then I, uh, we waited two minutes. Next time we get up, go to the airport. We fly to St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I have it all on film. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it was just nice. Wow! But he had this. He had a big mansion, and he was, and one of his mansions was in a quarter sack, and uh, his was the biggest one. And uh, when we got to the door, he had this big brass, uh, looked like a big brass trash can, but it wasn't. Wow! And you got to put. You had every sneaker. Sneaker in there. Sneaker. You got to put so them got, shoes in there. You got to take your shoes. That's off, right. Put them in that basket that little brass basket and when you get in all in the inside it's real marble flows and he got every house shoe for anybody coming there even the shack came through that he he had a house he got shoe a house for. shoe for mm. so that's what you 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 walked around in the house with so we in the house and it was so natural for me to sing and hear him sing and angela winbridge i just love her voice to hear her sing so they taking us around and so it's natural man ronald just starts singing Mm -hmm. And it looked like the song that we were singing, we were just singing and harmonizing, and, and it fit so perfect. And they was all looking at us, and you see this? They even act the same. They even walk the same. <laughs> they, so I'm like, man. So I veered off and uh, went around a corner. The house was so big and singing. Angela Winbush thought it was her husband. Mm. And wow. she turned around and looked at me and just grabbed me. She said, oh, my God, this, I'm thinking you're wrong. I said, no, I'm just singing. She said, <laughs> Y'all sound amazing. He said, man, I can't wait to, to go to the studio to do it. Wow. And she was so strong and unique. She could hear every wrong note, note. from me or Ronald. Mm. So the engineers was messing up because we both sounded so delight. And uh, they would erase Ronald's verse thinking <laughs> it's mine. And they would erase my verse thinking, thinking it's Ronald. Me. So Angela didn't like that. She says, I, I got to get this together. This, we ain't supposed to be here these long. Both of these guys are professional. We, so I said, I'll tell you what. Mark my my vocals on these tracks. Put them in yellow mm -hmm. with a piece of tape. Put his in orange. Okay. Now you mm -hmm. won't get confused. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, we did the song so fast and quick. It was just, it was unbelievable. Okay. So, But then what the amazing thing, I, the reason why I can't wait for it to come out I can't wait to hear, to see if I can tell the difference in both of y'all's voices. Well, you're going to be able to tell the difference because I had to sing in another octave. Just to get oh. them to even be Just to, to get it where it's, you can tell, tell who's the difference. Who. But some people right today, most people out of 100%, 95% still can't tell. Wow. Mm. So that's the exciting part when I get a chance to see people's expressions and how they look, and, and I'll be like, I'm see if he, and some of them say, oh, that's Ronnie, and some of them, no, that's Ronnie, no, that's Ronnie, so they go to the and I'm like, man, this is crazy, so I can't wait to do it, and I'm, I'm really trying to do this song and put it out before anything happened to me or him. Mm -hmm. That's it, so, that's uh, it. I think the world, uh, if my vision is, I think we need to be in King Charles, yeah. the back of people, and mm -hmm. sing, and then, one of them turn around and it's not the person that you think. And then when I turn around, it's not you. Be wow. like, whoa, that'd be that'd dope. Be dope. That'd be real yeah. cool. And that's what I really want to do. And I'm gonna talk to uh, Pup and you know Empire because that's who I'm going to release this next album with. with. And I'm gonna I talk to him and see if we can make that happen. My question is, if okay, say you go in the studio and both of you sing, can you tell the difference? Yeah. I can tell the difference. Ron can tell the difference. And he's oh, the yeah. first one saying, no, I know the difference because Ron is a look more higher than me, believe it or not. Ron mm -hmm. can hit some notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can go in there and hit some of his notes, but I can't hit, hit all, all his of notes. It. Yeah. And I know how far I can go. And, and you know, I'm following a legend, so he, he don't have to. That's <laughs> right. He can, I'm following him, so he can just do his thing. And right. I heard him hit some notes 
that's I mean a high tenor note is just you know off the chain and I'm like man I hit that note for his age his voice is phenomenal I mean, it is it's, it's, it's that's right crazy. today even if the new stuff that he's got out right now at his age I don't think a single out here can do what he have did in the music industry as far as singing wow. and what I love about Ronald Isley is the fact that he reinvented himself and stayed current as Mr. Where, Big right where a lot of artists can't a lot yeah. of the older artists is still doing Stuart, their right you know and I give credit to to R. Kelly on yes. that because Me R. Too. Kelly that was a smart move he did and him mm -hmm. and Ron Isley is real good partners and friends and uh, mm -hmm. he did say it's hard to work with Kelly which you know that's the good people when you start working with people that really know music you have to really humble yourself and yeah. listen to see where they want the song and how they wanted to sound because they wrote it so mm -hmm. they kind of pretty much know what it need to be like so he said other than that kelly's a good dude and uh they yeah, did a lot yeah of he's hits. very talented they did a lot of hits together i can't wait till you get out because i want to do a song with kelly you mm -hmm. want to do one with him when he get out oh yeah kelly's all right i mean i think you know you know courts got what they got to say yeah. but i still treat him like a, a celebrity a yeah. Person, yeah yeah a human you know yeah, a we good all. person you know uh, they're always going to attack the blacks for some reason. Come on, exactly. man. Why. Come on, man. But, you know, just like what they did to Michael Jackson. Same and thing. Cosby and Same thing. But they can't wrong. take away his legend from they him. Can't, they they can't, can't take away and his I, talent. Exactly. And I tell people that. And they look at me and say, oh, no, man, he washed up. I said, that's just mm -mm. your stupidity. I say, mm -mm. what this man have did in music. And I say, you don't know who Kelly wrote songs with. He wrote songs to Michael Jackson, a whole bunch of people. That's mm -hmm. right. I say, and, and trust me. That man probably have so much music when he come out, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to shock the world. Exactly. And I want to be one of the first ones to really work with him because I mm -hmm. really feel that I can do a lot of stuff. See, with and that. that's one of the things I had, one of the questions I had is who would you want to work with? But you already answered that. Yeah, I got uh, It's a lot of them I want to work with. You know, I want to work with a lot of different rappers. I want to work with a lot of different R&B ladies and men. I think me and Charlie Wilson can do something. That's my guy. Uh, yeah, that's I think my we guy. can do something together. Uh, I think... Um, me and believe it or not, I'd say me and Lady Gaga. Uh, really? Any, yeah. I would have never. Lady I would have never guessed Lady Gaga. Yeah, because my daughter, I do a lot of pop stuff for her, mm -hmm. so I didn't got into that feel. Kind of doing a lot of pop stuff with her. Singing is 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 very <laughs> easy. A lot of people don't know that. They think it's hard, but it's you just have to take your time, and it's a lot of breath takes that you have to take. You got to know that how to use your diaphragm or, or your voice. So when I was in church. Those are the to me are the king singles because they gonna they gonna beat your voice up until you get it right. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like uh pretty much that type of stuff. So you learn how to to uh control your voice. Let me ask you about Big Mo, man, because I know you guys uh, did a lot of uh, you know work together. I just want to try to understand that song and the process that Renetta and you guys done when y'all when y'all had um made that Barbie, because well, she was what six? She was she, six. She yeah. was six. What happened was I was in the studio with them one night, and uh, the guy by the name of um, I forgot the name of the producer, Sally. Sally was making that track, and I heard it, and I said, "Man, that's 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 a nice track." He said, "Yeah." He said, uh, "Yeah, me and Nope gonna come up with something. Me and Nope D gonna come up with something." So, Nope called me and said, "Hey, man." Uh, can you bring your baby to the studio? I said, it's two in the morning. What do you mean, man? <laughs> he said, well, can you bring your baby? We got something. C-note. No, note D. Note D, okay. I said, okay, man, I, I'll bring it, you know. So I said, you want to go to the studio? She said, yeah, daddy, I want to go to the studio. I said, all right, come on, let's go. She so was up I, anyway. Mm, so we get to the studio, and he said, man, I got a track that I think a little girl should sing. Mm. I said, okay, what's the hook? He says, the hook is... The bar, it's the bar, baby. The bar, baby. The bar, baby. I said, okay. And he said, um, I think your daughter can do it. You think your daughter can do it? Well, she in my arms, so she, when I'm singing, her head is doing this. She, <laughs> so I say, you think you can sing it? She said, yeah, Dad. I said, singing. She said, it's the bar, baby. The bar, baby. And she was doing it, but the last note struck us all. At the end, and I didn't tell her to do it. Nope, didn't tell her to do it. She said, it's the ball, baby. And then she said, baby, baby. And she did it again. So everybody looked at each other and said, man, we got to do it. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, uh, 
we're going to do it here? He said, no, we're going to do it at Skip Holman. Mm, the big in studio. In the morning, big studio. Wow. So, mm-hmm. Okay, so be there at 7 o'clock. So I was there, and Ron I was there. And she was excited, and she just kept singing it at home. <laughs> I can home. Mm-hmm. But she was in note, and I was like, man, this is incredible, Lord. And I just give <laughs> praise to Jesus. I wow. said, man, this is, this is incredible. Got to be. So when I got to Skip Holman, while she was so little, so when I got to Skip Home, we had to build up some chairs and a table to sit her on the table. To get to the so mic. So she can get to the mic. Wow. So when she got to the mic, she said, uh, uh, y- y'all ready? And they <laughs> all looked at me, and I looked at them. I said, man, she said, y'all ready? <laughs> she said, okay, we're going to play the track. Well, now I'm in the studio. She said that? They said, oh, we're okay, going to play okay. the track. We're going to play the track. And normally in the studio, I'm like, uh Okay, I know they're gonna do a, a little rehearsal, but I told Skip, I said you push record regardless. Yeah, mm-hmm. good. He said okay, so track came on, and they didn't have to tell her where to sing the song. Wow, she, she heard, heard it. She heard, she it. heard it when she when that song came on. She just she was like this. She was bobbing her head, but she knew and when she to said, start. And she said, "It's the ball, babe," and it went right on the ball. Wow. And she finished it. One take? One take. And then they stacked it. And when they stacked it, it was just unbelievable. Mm. And they was all in the studio jumping up and down. And I said, well, I guess she like, like daddy, like daughter. So I guess she, and she nailed it. And it's been a good hit for her ever since it started her career. That's amazing. Um, I wanted to go back because I know you said that at four, she was doing the beatbox mm-hmm. at ABC. And I know she, you did that song with her, um, Renetta, mm-hmm. at four. I did the song with Renetta. She was probably five. Oh, probably five. So uh, it was yeah. soon after that. It's soon after that. Because once you heard that, you're like, I yeah, got to do right. this. I, so I did it, and Blue Note did the track, and this was a phenomenal uh, producer, man. He probably taught everybody in Houston pretty much how to produce, but... He did the track. We did the track at my studio in the mm-hmm. house. And man, she just, she just, just a natural. Mm-hmm. And I pretty much didn't have to tell her what to say on that, you know, and she just listened to the song with me and, and we was we was just doing what we do. Mm-hmm. And uh, she just did it. And I'm like, man. So she got better and better and better and better. With your better. coaching, of course. With my coaching. So I start now getting off more into her. So mm-hmm. I start teaching her how to sing notes. I would get the piano and I would hit this note. And I say, that's your note for today. And she said, okay, my note for the day. I said, your note for the day. Hit that key. And she hit it, the key and say, dum. And she, everything in the, the day is, dum. So I can That's hear such a around. blessing to have a child that loves to do what you do. Because as parents, some, especially when we build a brand or a foundation, we want to build it for our kids. Right. But a lot of times our kids don't want to do what we do. Exactly. So it's such a blessing to, you know, to have a child grow up in your footsteps right. and actually create her own path. Right, so that made me get more deeper off into music. Mm-hmm. So I started listening to Nat King Cole. I remember when oh, they, I love Nat did, King Cole. they did they daughter and father thing. Mm-hmm. So that's what me and Ron that is finna do. We finna oh. do an album like that, kind of like in the 60s, kind of sound, but kind of give it a little update. And we finna do some stuff like Nat that. Nat and Father. Natalie Cole. Yeah, right. I seen you, when I seen you uh, do that song, I went back and looked, and you, yeah, I got real jealous, man. I said, man, she's oh, right man. here, man. <laughs> he set the ball real high, you know what I'm saying? Him and his daughter sang, and it sound good. I, I got to step my game up. You, know? <laughs> you hear that, Shamari? You got to sing Shemari. with your daddy. Yeah, you got to figure out how to sing or yeah. something, because I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to let y'all just do your thing and not leave us behind. Yeah, we got to work. You got to work. work. I, that's what it is. <laughs> I love that song y'all did when, when she was um, real, when you were saying, I love you, Ronette, I love yes, you. Mm-hmm. Oh, song. man, that. That, that, hey, we listen at that. This woman here, we was down in Hallsville, uh, Texas, right. East Texas. Oh, yeah. Driving and, we put and it listening on. I said, to oh man, I gotta do. I just something. love the way how she sang that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, him said, too. Both of them. It was crazy. And I was laughing, and and that wasn't supposed to be in the track because I'm listening to her. But it was funny the way she said it. You know, oh day I love you. Yeah. I love so like, it. So I say, man, I love you too, and I kind of laugh. But they thought it was unique. They kept it in the song. Right. So I say, cool. Because it's genuine. Funny. It sounds it's genuine. Made you proud, didn't it? It made me very proud. I'm it very had. proud of my daughter. Uh, 
I can do probably like six or seven part harmonies. Ronetta can do eleven or twelve. Man, wow. she sung on here. So she can, she can, she can go. She can actually really go. She can actually change her voice. Wow. To Jamaica. Really. Yeah, yeah, we should have got. You didn't hear. I, we didn't get got. You didn't, I didn't get that from she her. She, she didn't, didn't do sing, it. She didn't sing "Wet Me Feet" for you. No. <laughs> oh my! We gotta goodness. get her. We gotta get yeah. her. Watch when I see get her. Get her. Oh, get her when I see her. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna see if we can pull it up and perform it. Okay. She need to do "Wet Me Feet" for you when she. Wow. When you hear that, it, I it swear sound God, like a. It sound like she's island. From like island. an island girl. Yeah. I, and I'm going to tell. You know, she's she straight out. Because I hate when I watch movies. And you know you have those people who play a Jamaican role. <laughs> right. And I'm like, like that. that is a, that, the fakest Jamaican that. I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> don't yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. She, I'm telling her best. Well, I, the lady used to be my mother's best friend. Mm -hmm. She I'm when my mother passed, but she used to do run at us hair. And mm -hmm. she's from the islands. She okay. So when their family come around, they used to watch my daughter when I'm going to work or something. And Ronetta was the type of young lady. She would listen to everything they say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question. Like uh, on the, um, like going back to Pimp C, Renetta told a story about y'all going to the zoo together. Now, I want to hear a story from you about something that nobody else would know that you and PMC did, something together that's unknown. Well, um, something together that's unknown. I know Pimp as Chad Butler. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the thing that Pimp did that he didn't do around a lot of people. When, we were, when I was on a tour with him, we would, you know, do our music and get off the stage and do he would always call me and say, and, and I would mark him. He would always, she said that. Mm -hmm. she would always, he would always come in, hey, Ronnie, what you doing? I said, man, I'm just telling you, man, come on down here. Let's go to the Waffle House. I need to eat some steak and eggs. <laughs> and I said, okay, all right. steak and eggs? He said, yeah, we're going to get steak and eggs. I don't want nobody else with us. It's just going to be me and you. <laughs> so he still got his pimp feel yeah. talking to me. And I would laugh. And I'm like, this, he's a character, but he's. A really good. So that dude. was him all the time. He no. never turned on and off. He turned on and off. Oh, so okay. it's like when he get ready to go to the show. Well, I put it this way: when we together, he's like real calm and just say, "Hey, man, come on, man, let's go, go chill, okay. go to the mall or something, buy some stuff, and you know, for the next show." So be cool. The character ain't out yet, but soon as we get off the call, the character kick in. <laughs> so. We getting ready to go to the mall. We don't realize how early it is. It ain't open. So the security come to the door, and this is the first time he's, he talked. So he say, I wonder why why y'all don't open the door for me. I'm Pimp C. Y'all don't open this damn door. I'm trying to spend some money. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm looking at him. I'm saying, he didn't change. You know what I'm saying? He didn't change his character. He say, you know who I am? I'm Pimp C. Open the door. I got money. You know what I'm so, so dude said, man, we ain't open. He said, man, I don't give a damn about you. Open, open the door. Open it. So I'm like, man. So I'm just sitting back. He said, what you waiting on? Come on in. So I said, all right, see, come on in. I come on in. And he kind of, he said, we just going to win the shop. And so he got his hands and he do his mouth like that. We just going to win the shop. I'm looking for I'm looking for some shit tonight. Cause I'm performing. I'm like, man. So he say, Ronnie, what you want? I say, man, whatever we I mean, whatever you need of me to be in. He said, get what you want, cause I'm paying for it. I got money. So I'm like, man. So the security, go, okay, yes sir, oh yes sir. We gonna I'm gonna go get my manager so we open the door. Go get him. So I say, man. I'm looking at this cat. I'm like, man. He, what city we he, all in? He really. We was in Chicago. <laughs> so I'm. I'm I'm chilling. I'm like, man, he really in myself. I'm saying to myself, he really is then turning to the character again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, after we got all our stuff and then we get back in the car, he said, all right, man, we go eat. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're going to eat. He said, yeah, whatever you want, we go eat. I said, all right. So, I looked at him. I said, well, why you ain't that character no more? He said, this is the thing. I don't, my name is Pimp C. That's my my stage name, and that's who I am. So I have to have the pimpish talk when I'm out, because that's what they know me by. Yeah. He said, man, when I get home and get with somebody real that ain't on the 
the bullshit he said did, I turned into Chad, Chad Butler. Chad Butler. And he will only turn, turn into Chad Butler, as far as I'm concerned, is with me because I didn't, I don't smoke, I don't drink. So yeah. he knew I was always focused. Yeah. So he like, and you cool, you laid back. And it's funny, uh, Mama West's mother, she had a Cocker Spaniel. Okay. And the Cocker Spaniel will only come to me. Mm. Really? Everybody else, that, that dog's going to bite if mm. they don't know him. So she will, I'm the only one that she would let hold a Cocker Spaniel. And wow. she kept him clean and she, he, that dog, Got groomed more than some dudes get the bath. So I like, man, and she had him in every show. Mm. And wow. she, she called me, she called me, said, Ronnie, come down there. I need you to walk, watch my dog. dog. I got to go to the store. So, okay, cool. And I will, I will go down there. And she just, Did she go to all of his shows? Mama West went to pretty much every show that I know. Um, the industry didn't like her because she was real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she didn't play no games with, with Pimp and Bond. She said, my two boys, y'all going to pay them. What, regardless of what's going on, this is what it costs, this is what they want, this is what they're going to get or we leave. Now, I learned a lot from Mama West. She said, um, when they come in, you know, you, you, you send them their deposit that's non-recruitable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they get there, they're going to call, I'm going to call you and say, my boy's here, y'all need to have their money. Oh, they're not performing. Mm. You're gonna lose that part. The positive. straight business. She was straight, and she didn't care who it was. She, little old bitty thing. She didn't care who you was. This one promoter come and said, well, "We're not paying nothing." She said, "Nigga, who is you?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so he said, "Well, I'm the one on the club." She said, "I don't care how many clubs you own. If you want my boys to perform, you need to have their money, or you need to go get it, or we going she back to court offer." Woo! Now feel that. I said, <laughs> "Man," I said, so I'm like, "Man, she powerful." Dude came back. Call her and say, Miss West, we, we have your money. That's what she you said. Building. I thought you were happy because it's sold out. <laughs> so that promoter probably made eighty, ninety thousand dollars back then. You know, uh, Pimp them was big. It was, yeah. they, you know, they did two shows. They did yeah. a kids show in the morning, and we did a uh, an adult show at night. night. So he. So she's who he got his personality. He's outspoken. Oh, oh man, she was, she was outspoken. Wrong. And he loved his mom, man, and they stayed together a lot on the road. And mm -hmm. I, I, I give it to his mama. If it wasn't for her, no telling where a pimp would have been. But right. when she stepped in his life and took over managed position and stuff like that, man, man, they just took off. Took off. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do any? Uh, you do? Do you ever do anything with rap a lot? I did some stuff with Scarface, and uh, you know, uh, back in the day. Uh, a rap a lot is rap a lot. Yeah, I, I, I love them. You know, uh, look, Jay Prince is is a businessman. Yeah. a lot of people talk crazy about him, but I don't because it's a business. It's business, and, and you know, he he gonna present you a contract, and it's up to you. He gonna exactly. let you, you know, let you go take it to your lawyer, whatever you wanna do. But a lot of those guys was. So never had money like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so when you get a guy come and say, well, I'm going to get 250000 you know, you want to sign him. They ain't reading. They just want the money, so they're going to buy them a car, some jewelry, some swangles, or whatever they got to do, and they rolling with their partners. But they never look at the fine print. Mm -hmm. That's not Jay's fault. Yeah. Did you have, well, a, did you have an opportunity to sign with him, or you never did? I never had an opportunity to sign with him, but, I mean, if he came to me and say, Ryan is signing, I'm, I, look, I get the contract, and I let my lawyer look at it, and if it's preventable, right, yeah, I don't have no problem. Zay powerful, you know, yeah. he's a businessman. You know, he can get you where you need to get well, in your life. You can get your doors and that I, you I, may can't get in. Yeah, and I, I pretty pretty much sure that he probably asked you, you know, who you want to be with or who you want on your album, who, you know, mm -hmm. what's, what's your goal in life and his music. I, I'm, I'm most certain that he do that. Yes. But a lot of the youngsters was young and they don't, they don't. They, they ain't don't, thinking right? about they that. They not trying to say, I'm going to take it home to my mom, I'm going to take it home to my dad, I'm going to give me a lawyer. They wasn't on that because they feel, well, if I take it to a lawyer, I got to give him some of this money. I ain't trying to give nobody <laughs> this money. That's right. And see, that's the thing with, with the rap a lot thing on a lot of the artists that sign that's that. They not going to tell you that, but that's the thing. I, I get or it. Or they took it home to mom and dad. Mom and dad don't know nothing about no. that stuff yeah, anyway. Most of them no. don't. Right. They, like, you know, they happy that you signed probably. Right. But most mothers going to say, hey, man, you need to get a lawyer. Yes. That's right. But I like the, the way how the he kid, said that. Most mothers Yeah, but the say, kids. Lord, have mercy. Do you hear this? What's going on? Because <laughs> that's what my mama said. Make For sure. sure you let me see that contract. Yeah. And, and I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't let her see the rec shop contract. Because you didn't I, see it. You know, back then I was broke. And I was like, We're going to give you 10 racks. All right, man, I'm going to sign it. I'm going to go and do what I got to do. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and you have clause in those contracts. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you something about old, uh, ESG, man, because I that 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 guy right there. I since swinging and banging. I, I've been following that guy a long time, man. So how did you got you? How did you and him meet, and how, what made you guys? Because uh, uh, I know you guys didn't work together. Well, me and ESG ended up on the same label. Okay, so Rex that, that was Rex Shop. Okay, so ESG is 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 incredible. You know, I don't really have nothing bad to say about him. He's very incredible, talented, and he can write and he can freestyle. So he's one of the biggest freestyles out there in Houston. But okay. he can write. We, me and him have a good relationship. We never really just got into it with each yeah. other. Uh, he always looked out for me on shows. He always, you know, uh, say, hey, Ronnie, I got this. Uh, think about this track, you know, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, cool. And, and it always worked it out good. I did a lot of songs with ESG on all yeah. his projects, most of all his projects. And uh, he's, he's, he's a good artist. He's a good artist. Um, when I say... I can. I seen ESG go in the studio and freestyle for about probably four hours straight. Wow, four hours straight. Just going hard. Just going hard. Love it. Just going hard. I'm talking about and and, and you can you can probably pick probably about three albums out of it. Uh, he's he's off the chains. Did, he's how, a did, how did you end up on Rex Shop? I end up on Rex Shop. I was already on the uh, getting off the UGK tour. Okay. And. Uh, D-Rex called, screw and screw, told D-Rex some things about me, and they called me to come talk to me, and uh, that's how that happened. Screw told me, you know, I think Rex Shop want to sign you. You know, I said, okay. And uh, I had already got a wind of it, but I didn't really take it serious, but because they was having a lot of artists over there. There was a lot of artists mm -hmm. over there. It was, it was ESG, D. Gotti, Sean P., Tight Eyes, uh, it was uh, Big Mo. It was Pokey. Uh, Big yeah. Pokey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who else was over there? Isis Ray was over there. Uh, There's a lot of artists over there. You know what I'm saying? And we all came together. A lot of producers, Chicken Hawk, Double D, Blue Note, Sinclair. A lot of them over there. Yeah, Sinclair. How did you? Did you? How did you? Did you feel like you may get lost in the sauce over there, or did you? Feel no, like no. I I pretty much knew what they wanted from me. Hooks and uh, pretty much hooks. I pretty much knew they wanted hooks for me, and because my hooks was hot, I was real hot then, moving mm -hmm. a lot of numbers. Me and UGK had just went diamond ten million sold. You know. Wow. And, one day was moving, uh, riding dirty album was moving. Oh, that went Pretty home. much everything Pimp C and Bumby Touch was moving. Mm -hmm. So it's like they knew I was with them cats. They knew I had a lot of experience then. So they figured, you know, we can get him over here to sing some hooks. So we, we can move some stuff. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that everybody over there was so talented to whether I got on a hook or not, they records was moving. They did like I think 20 or 10 albums in one year. Yeah. That, that was unheard of. Uh, for the Rec Shop family, and every album had hits on it. You know, not just songs with me on it. I mean, they they got a bunch of hits over there. So it opened up a door for me. And you know, like I said, I appreciate you know the D Rec family, yeah, and, and the Rec Shop you know artist family over there. So I always be a part of them. But you know, it comes a time in your life. Sometimes you got to move forward and do what you do. Because I was really an R and B dude. You sure was. What, what about the, uh, the, the the you was you was blessed because you didn't deal with the sip and syrup and all that. I I let them do their own category. Yeah, on, on sip and syrup and and the weed smoking and whatever they want to talk. How did about. you How did you deal with that? Being in the midst of it, that but not being and not they, and not being on it. You well, wasn't on it, but I you was in the midst of it. Yeah. And they didn't understand that. They like, we don't understand how this guy can come in here and, and do what he do and bounce and don't get uh, contact or don't get, you know, don't he never drink no syrup. He never do this, you know. Yeah, we don't even see him with a women, woman sometimes. Yeah, so he yeah. just come in and go out. Well, my mind was on pretty much building my studio and building my legacy the way I need to build it. Yeah. So I knew I was on the label and I knew it won't take me long to, you know, sing a hook. Yeah. You know, most of the time, sometimes they'll write the hook, you know, and just say, uh, you know, I can't sing, but do it like this. I said, yeah. okay, cool, and I do it. And it's so your hit. part didn't take that long. So too. my part didn't take that long. So they always waited the last minute before I even get on the albums. Like some albums, they say, well, you know, we got three songs we want you to sing on. And they just wait till everybody's done and they called me to skip home, and Note D and a couple of writers will come in there, and we'll sit down and we'll figure it out, and I'll go in there and knock it out. 
Wow. Back in the day, I used to always think about Houston because they had when, when they had a, a heck of a run. And you remember when that was going on? It was a screw tape, and then it was a regular tape. They was they was they was du- double dibbing. I call it. And then, in my mm-hmm. eyes, it seemed like they start trying to be like everybody else instead of sticking to what was they was doing better than everybody else to me. And, and nobody else was selling like double the music like these guys was doing. I seen it influence Dallas too the right. same way. What do, what what you think made them get away from that? Well, when Screw died, everything went downhill. If, if you ask me, uh, that's what I'm, yeah. Uh, I want what your I opinion. What I mean by act going downhill is a lot of the people were so excited about the the way he did the Screw sound. It was still just moving. They didn't think about well, the man is dead. What you gonna do next? How you gonna keep it moving? Yeah. And they didn't have the answer to that. And I've been wanting to tell the world this, they didn't have the answer to that. Well, the answer to it, whoever takes Screw Spot or whatever DJ, you got to go back where it started. Okay. So it's, it's just like if you get married and, and, and you got a bad relationship now and you and your wife is not getting along, well, what you gotta do is go back to day one. What, how did you get her? That's right. You feel me? So you got to go back that. So when you go back that, and then you come back and do the same thing you did to catch her, everything going to come back together like a puzzle. Mm-hmm. So that's the same thing wrong with the screw culture right now. So whoever's taking over it need to go back to what well, a mic is in the middle of the flow. You rapping, everybody getting a piece of the rap and mm-hmm. getting on the tape and he mixing it and chopping and screwed. That's what started it. That's what it needs to go back so to. So that's what they need to go back to. So if they I go did. back to whoever go back to that, then... You'll start to see it redevelop. You'll start seeing it redevelop. You feel what I'm saying? It's going to always be said chopped and screwed because that's the brand. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's, that's what I think need to happen. When I thought about him, it was more like a, a Michael Watts after he passed. I was like, okay, Michael Watts would be the next one that, you know, kind of. Kind of, kind of keep it going. Keep it going, but it went so far. I had Mike Jones on here, and Mike Jones, you know, he talked about his run and everything. How it, it pretty much how because I was more like, you know, he was a marketing genius the way he was putting his stuff out during that yeah. time. But what those guys did was the same, kind of like what Pimp them was doing. They had a screw in the background, a screwed portion of a song on, on the. T- they did the same exact thing that same. that that Pimp them was doing, right? right? Right. So, so, and I think people are still now migrating back to putting the old song, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the, just We've just taking a, a loop or something off of the old song. We right. we hearing that now. So it's going back a little bit, but I just don't know if it's gonna have the same impact or how long it's well, gonna run. It's, this time. it's not gonna have the same impact because once they are not using twelve hundred technique turntables. Okay. They are using the digital sounds. So mm-hmm. That's gonna take away from the feel. And see, screw was. Screw was actually mixing six to seven songs into one. Yeah. Including R and B. And that's what I taught him how to do is mix R and B with hip hop. Okay. So a lot of people don't know I taught didn't teach him really uh play turntables, but showed him some things about the turntables is what I did. You feel me? And he when he put that together, he like, Man, you off the change. I said, Yeah, this is all you need. You know, so when I, I grab R and B records and taught him how to blend R&B with hip hop, that's what gave him the sound that he been looking for. Wow. So, yeah, and, and so when you when you look at the music and, and where it's at today versus where it used to be, when it went digital and, and, and it messed some money up for a lot of people because, it, you know, crates and right. taking the boxes, of, yeah, right. going to different record stores. Right. That way it was before. But right. like, like I told you, I was around before rap started too, so I've been watching this process, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so used to they would come to each city with the CDs or with the cassettes or whatever they was pushing, records, right. whatever. Now everything's been digitized. Mm-hmm. How do you, how, first of all, how, do you, how did you transition? Is that been a problem this, this, for you? No, it didn't be a problem for me because I gave Screw the first DJ job that he had. That was a skating ring. Okay. So then that made me free to do what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. But once they stopped the 
twelve hundreds. Now you ain't listening to the fudge on the needle. You Correct. Ain't missing the I skip missed that beats. counter to be honest see, with you. That's what people is like. I, I like digital. that. Yeah, see, digital it ain't gonna do that. No, it's not. It's just gonna be clean and jammer. But when you planning on technique twelve hundreds, you get the fudge on the needle. You yeah. get some scratches. That's sometime. good stuff. And it gave you a big analog sound. Yeah. And that's what they are missing. That's okay. Really, mm -hmm. The feel that's ain't really the same. The albums is coming back because people is like, man, we missed the, the, the you know, the needle on the Marvin Gaye record or yeah. the Ron Osley record. Yeah. And you can hear the Earl Green record. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's missing. That's the feel. That's the reason most of all the DJs is is talking to companies saying, man, bring, bring back Panasonic 1200s. That's yeah, it. We yeah. need them back. Got to have them so back. They all coming back now. So uh, I think it's a, some some company, I forgot the name of bought Panasonic. Okay. And they, they building the 1200s back. So it's like, that's that's what was missing. Yeah. And I don't know if you know it or not, but a lot of DJs, a lot of DJs and producers are going back to the analog gear because now they realize and this is what the sound is. Yeah, they got to have it. And if you don't have that, it's not going to be authentic yeah, see, organic. Yeah, you know, back in the days, we used to sing on Real Reels. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm talking about, you know, uh, Needle Baker and Rod Karen and, and, you know, Aretha Franklin and all of them, they sung on Real Reels. And it was one tape. You know what I'm talking about? It wasn't like today you can fix it. It wasn't no fixing back in them days. It no, was, it wasn't. It was a band. Man. You get on there, take it, and that's it. That's the music. That's And it wasn't no going back. But it was analog, and it had a big sound, and people are missing that. Now the mm -hmm. youngsters are growing up. They they seeing it. They're like, you know, they doing their research. They say, well, you know what? We're not going to get the sound unless we get the 1200s, or uh, we go back and get the analog gear and the big mixing consoles. You're right. That's where you're going to get it at. You're right. Real, and that's real. so crazy that you say that, because then in life, when you think about younger folks and when we older and tell them certain things they're like no that's old folks we do it more you know digital we're yeah. gonna figure it out we're gonna figure out how to get it that way but use it in a digital way to get that way mm -hmm. so that's what i would think that they would do so when i hear you say oh they're going back to this yeah they're that's good back. they're going back to us a lot of studios that i've been going to here lately they buying their compressors. They buying big mixing consoles. They, they, you know, man, we didn't know a mixing board can do this. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. you know, the companies, they're going to fool you. They're going to put a lot of lights on this beat machine and a lot of this stuff to make it pretty and sound good, mm -hmm. and you're going to go for it. I That's think if they, they bring all of that back, they'll probably bring it back but modernize it. You see what I mean? It won't be the same exactly like how it used to be. It, it, they'll never, add some yeah. stuff to it to make it. Yes, yeah, so they'll never make those keyboards like that. I have all my old keyboards. So they, <laughs> they'll never make those keyboards do what they do today. It's going to be digital. It's going to be a bunch of lights on it, mm -hmm. and it's going to satisfy the new generation. And that's where they're going with it. That's where, you know, all the people that make these kind of, you know, keyboards and stuff, companies, that's what they're going for. They're going for... But I, if you like it, you buy it. But everything new is not always better because exactly. my daughter, she had gotten into records. Mm -hmm. And we went, you know, you can find record players almost anywhere now. But I remember my record player back home was the big table mm -hmm. where when you lift it up and you had yeah, all the, I mean, everything. we had so many vinyls, like old school vinyls. Man. And that played so well. Like for Christmas time, we would play it all the time. Mr. Davis Jr., the Dean Martin. I mean, everything. We had them all. Man. My daughter, I bought her one, and in no time, probably in less than a year, it stopped working. The needle, it'll work, but a needle didn't work good on the newer vinyls. Vinyl. It's like, in today's society, it's a money-making venture. They make, right. When they come up with newer stuff, it and makes it, you want to go buy another one just right. to play this. I'm like, yeah. it don't make no and sense. And the reason it don't sound like that, because it was digital. Mm. All digital, it wasn't analog. Mm -hmm. So they just go press it on the new vinyl machines. Mm -hmm. So it's going what it's going to sound like. It's going to sound like the digital. That's right. right. But if you do it in a studio that got analog gear in it and you master through analog mm -hmm. and you go get that that sound pressed on the album, it's going to sound like the old album. Album again. And, but even better because it's going to be so unique because sound change. Sound change. Mm -hmm. I mean, Beats is more, you know, bigger. Bass is more bigger. Everything is more bigger mm -hmm. now. You see? And when so. you talked about um, sound, I remember coming to Texas for the first time, and my roommate, she was from Vegas, right, and uh -huh. I, in college, and she was listening to Screw, and I'm like, what is that music? <laughs> I'm like, this is so slow. I'm like, what are they saying? It's slow, and <laughs> she would be bumping it, and I'm like, did you ask to see was she drunk or high? 
<laughs> she wasn't either, but she loved it, and yeah. she was from Vegas. I'm a, well, I'm gonna tell you why she probably loved it, then, if she wasn't drunk. Ah, she could hear the words. That's why they slowed it down. So but I had, couldn't even had, hear the words. You had people like Buster Rhyme, mm-hmm. uh, all of these guys that that rap real, real Jay-Z fast. Jay Z too. Jay Z rapped. He rapped fast when he first you know, came out. All these guys, Kano, uh, all these rapping Twister, all Twister, these guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's his name out of Louisiana? Mystical. Mystical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When they slowed their stuff down, you could hear exactly what, they, what they said. And that's the reason. And if you get drunk, it's like kind of you like, well, I'm laid back. So when you lay back, you really are, is listening. Your mind is really into the music. So now you can hear it. You can hear the sound. You can hear everything. Mm-hmm. That's why they did it. That's why they drank. They used to drink lean. Yeah. It was too slow for me, though, because I would, the, the beat. Because for mm-hmm. me, I listen to the beat before I hear any words of the song. Now, why you listen to the beat? I bet you listen to the beat because you want to dance. <laughs> you want to dance. I do, I do. See, See Jamaica, they but, dance but, all in the trees. They dance out, but they dance. They they dance. dance. All over. They but, dance everywhere. But I, I do want to hear the message. You right. know what I mean? But for me, for some reason, every time a song comes on, I can hear the beat. And I listen to the song. I love the song for the longest. And can't tell you one word the song says, except from the hook. And you know how to dance to it because you didn't hurt the beat. And it would, right. that makes sense. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's another reason they slowed the music down because females wanted to hear what the rappers well, were saying. saying. Right. Now, even me, I want to hear, you know, you get somebody, you don't know what he's saying. You don't know what you just slow saying. it down. He might be saying, girl, you're so fine and pretty. I, you know, <laughs> that type of stuff. So that's the only thing that I liked it when he slowed it down. But Screw slowed music down for me. He didn't mm-hmm. slow it. Slow it, slow it, slow it. He just slowed it enough for me to hear it. Let, let me ask you, top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre, top three. We do that here. Number one. Any genre. Any genre that we do what? Top three top artists three of artists. all time. Your top three. My Your top, top three. three as major people? Or Whatever you want to do. The your people top that, Your three. top three. However you want to lace and dice it, that's up to you. The legendary Ronnie Spencer is give us his top three of all time on Boss Talk 101. Number one. Ron Isley. No, oh, okay, <laughs> Ron, that makes sense. Ron Isley, number one. Number two. Marvin Gaye. That's dope. Marvin Gaye. We never got a Marvin Gaye. Mm-hmm. Number three. Number three. Is Don't that one get them every time? Number mm-hmm. three. Because they be like, who am I going to fit in that slot? I know. <laughs> do, can, do, can it be a girl? Or yeah, it can be a girl. Anybody. Anybody. You know, that KLC had a whole notebook here. He had been writing stuff yeah. down before he got here. He always I don't know what that phone. was about. I'm like, how in the hell did he got it? it didn't have, we never told him he was asking the question. He's like, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, dang. Number, number three. Number three would have to be. Man, I got so many though. Uh, uh, <laughs> narrow it down. <laughs> Michael wow. Jackson. Michael okay. Jackson. Yeah, that's a good you, one. They always fit either Michael or Tupac in there. A lot always. of people say Michael Jackson. Uh, uh, they I'm say Chris a, Brown better than Michael Jackson I'm now. A, I'm the youngsters t- done flipped it. I'm going to tell you about Mike. <laughs> I never missed none of his shows that came in Houston. You went to Now, I'm going to tell you, I learned Michael. I studied him not dancing. I studied the way he did music. Really? The way he did his concerts, the way the band he had. I studied that part of Mike in the business part. I studied that from Mike. Wow. Mm. Mike is the coldest in that. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, I might, people might be around the world, oh, you you tripping. But no. Mike the coldest. If you look at his stadiums, when he filled them up, is ain't too many artists did that, but people like U2 and, you know, uh, you know, a lot of rock stars. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. As far as in the black culture, the dancing movement, I think Mike started that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, talking about a subject for as a woman, a story, I think Mike did that. Wow. Uh, bands, he went to so many band members because he wanted top of the line mm-hmm. band players. And if you, I got a film on him where he just talked to the keyboard artist, the drama, and he like, you know, I, you need to play it like the way I wrote it, and you need to play it like it's supposed to be played. Mm-hmm. So if you got something, you need to play it like that. 
Mm-hmm. And which he was right. He would tell if, you yeah, that. He would tell you that if if the bass needs to be, you need to play it. Like and he that. would tell him. And he, he knew stop. it. He would stop. He said, "Well, what about this when it's explosion?" He said, "Don't worry about that. I have to feel that." Wow. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So stuff like that makes me rewind and and listen, really listen to what he's talking about and what mm-hmm. he's doing, and it helped my career because wow. I would do the same thing now with. My producers, now man, play this bass line like this. So you gotta I get the sound playing, right. I first. might be playing it out of key on this keyboard, but I'm not playing it out of key in my mind. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna do it. I will get the mic and do what I just did. Doom, doom, doom. Can you play it like that? He said, okay, yeah, I'll play it like that. So he play it like that. I said, now go octave lower. And then there he feel it. Then he said, okay, now nah, see what I said. Now that's what we need to record. And then I do the bass, or I do the drums, or I do the screens because I can sing, so I can hit, you know, keyboard notes. Mm-hmm. You saying he, that? I, it, it reminds me of the Aretha Franklin movie I just watched the other day. And she was and she one. did that in you know in the right. studio, and she started with the piano, and she was like, "Now follow this, and you know, do this," and she was listening, and you know, and then she added this part, and she's like, "No, take that one out," and. Right. That's what she did but a lot see, of. But see, a lot of people don't know she only played black keys. Really? Really? Aretha Franklin. She started out just playing black keys because they are in note. The white keys is, is another whole different kind of like a note and a half. Wow. So if you go get a keyboard and you just play the black keys, you can do a song. Most of the rappers, that's what they do. Really? Yeah. I, you very seldom find a rap, rapper can play white and, and black, black keys, keys because when you do that now you into R&B structure okay okay if you're a rap it's just one if you notice just one loop yeah that's it one loop <laughs> and it's no change R&B you got key changes mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying you got a rhythm part you got a straight part so it takes a keyboard artist to really just Come in, come in the studio and say, okay, man, we can do it this way or we can do it this way. Now, those are producers. When they sit down, and I sit down with a lot of them, they say, okay, we're going to produce a track. Okay, we're going to produce a track. The engineer pretty much know what to give you because he's going to listen to your voice and he's going to put those cards in your voice. Now, when I get an engineer like that that can play a keyboard artist and he can, they know what note I sing in, the song is done real quick. Wow, mm-hmm. let me ask you this. So... What young younger guy down there, uh, just in the music in general, don't have to be in Houston either. Just who who do you like on the young the young side that you've seen that came up here recently or within the last uh, five to seven years? The new youngsters. The new young. The one new, of the new, new young. New yeah. Youngsters. Somebody that you like because I value your opinion. I just want. I to uh, I listen to Young Thug. Okay. And uh, I kind of listen to what he's talking about and his character. Okay, as I kind of I kind of like you like the young thug, young thug, and um, I don't too much listen to a lot of them. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure. But when I listen to him, my daughter put me on him. Okay, you know, she put me on the rich homie Quan. Yeah, thug, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, a lot of those new new new, new some artists. Some of them yeah. I can't even remember their names. <laughs> and some of them is jam. I don't take nothing from none of them. Yeah. I don't take no. I don't give none of them no criticism about music because music is an art mm-hmm. and, and who's for me to say you're not you don't sound good yeah it's a trillion people out here so you don't know who's gonna like it and some people i see a lot of older artists and man I ain't, I ain't with that I ain't with that young stuff yeah i think like this what if somebody said that about me that's what i was gonna ask you like when you and you was in the studio you and big right. moment like when it, when it first started right. you should be able to see a reflection of what's going on with right. them and where exactly. you was at when you was that age is right. what i was thinking it, yeah because i don't i don't diss no artists i think every artist is an artist because that's what it's about art of music now i can say well a young guy don't have don't know the theory of music mm-hmm. that's a lot of them don't know that okay that's a true you know statement but I can't say he he's not an artist. I can't say that. No, you can't say that. Because the ones that you think is not moving numbers, hell, some of them moving more numbers than I ever moved in my career. Mm. Correct. But so well, that's not I, I don't know about that. 
Yeah. It's yes, a different. It's a the, reason they, the reason I say that because they're scaling it different. It's yeah. a totally different ball game the way they're doing it now well, versus when you was doing it. Well, when and, I was doing it. It's a, it's a different grind, so I can't measure the two. A lot of people be saying that and trying to figure out ways to make, because a lot now you got a million streams that, that equate to $4,000. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, so you, you're right about a, that. It's, it's a different grind. You're right about that because when I was moving units, you had to scan the barcode. That's right. The, the, the internet wasn't, so we did 10 million on going people going in that. That's why it. I said I can't equate it to what so, what you done yeah. versus what's happening today. I can't even level that the same way. It's right. totally different to me. Right. So that's my opinion. And I always <laughs> I always think the internet is the numbers is not real anyway. So because me a neither. Lot, a lot of I people, don't think it's real. A lot of people buy buy they. By, by these, views, by, by views. right. I right. don't buy nothing. <coughs> yeah, by, when it by, comes to my music, I don't buy it's no organic. screens. Yeah. I don't do nothing. It's what you see. It's what, what you, you get. get. Well, I have a question. Um, how do you feel about the artist who is more theatrical than actually the talent? Because I've seen more artists coming up that they have you talking to about that little boy Nas X not only him but you have a lot of other <laughs> artists who are doing all of these crazy things to get the views to get the fans and not actually be you know artistic artistic that's the new stuff that's different that's 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 kind of like a talk show people the world is knows it people want to see what you can do now if you can get on the stage and and half your face is white and half is black kiss did that you, remember exactly. kiss exactly you mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying and do that they got probably out of hundred percent, seventy five percent came just to see the theatrics, them right. looking like characters. That's what happened then. So yeah. this is what the kids are doing now. They say, you know what? I'm gonna make this part of my hair green, this part uh, gold, and this part pink, and and and, and I don't have nothing <laughs> back here. And and I'm gonna have my fingernails black on one hand, and the other hand gonna be right, and I'm gonna have a bunch of gold on it. Well, okay, that's something different. And this is what the majors. And the world throb on. Well, it's different and he jamming. You know, the Jews up there, if it's got bass in it, if it sound real good and the car's banging and they can dance to it, we abide. Because this is what's happening for the, the new up and coming generation of music. But it's a big twist. Music goes around all the time. So what's happening is disco, uh, R&B, all that's coming back because those lanes are open in music right now. All of pretty much most of the great 75% of them is dead. Right. So now R&B lane is wide open. Soft Definitely. rock name brand is wide That's open. what somebody yeah. else said that R&B is the next around because No, it, rap, it is. They doing it now. That's they doing it now. You see so Rod Wave, rap. like Rod Wave, yeah. all those mm -hmm. guys are singing. Yeah. Yeah. Mo 3s they were yeah. singing. They just trying to it, but they they want to make it like it's rap, but it's really singing. And they just moving it and, and it's the, steadily the, getting closer back to R&B. You know, boom, it's going to be R&B. It's going to mm -hmm. be disco. You're going to start hearing sounds like Evelyn Champagne King. You're going to start hearing the sound like the Pawn Sisters. You're going to start hearing that sound again. Mm -hmm. You're going to start hearing I Luther Vandross and, <laughs> and, you know, uh, Rick James and all of these type of people. You mm -hmm. know, Marvin Gaye and Teddy Pender. You're you going to start hearing it. Wow. My album that I got right now is in that field right now. Yeah. That's the reason I sit on it. Because I know when the, when the lane open up, I can feel my part in. It's there you go. Mm. If Lord let me live to see it, yeah, hey, he's so gonna I'm let just, you live to see it. So it's like I'm that's here with what you. It is. So you know what I'm saying? The, the songs that I'm gonna give y'all tonight, y'all gonna see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm gonna give you some. I'm gonna give you some music tonight where you can you can play on your radio and yeah. do what you gotta do. Man, we go. Hey, we gonna enjoy it. We just ride. We just gonna yeah. ride to and, it. And that way, you are gonna say, I now see where it's coming from. And mm -hmm. it's a little bit. I took a little bit from every artist that I like. And I, I sit down, me, what I do, I sit down and listen to, like, if I want to do a Marvin Gaye song, I'm going to listen to it for about a month. Just wow. just all his music. Now I can get his diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. Is the way he uses wind and breath to, to get notes. See, a lot of people don't know when Marvin Gaye did songs, he would take a rake. Remember the time when you uh, yeah, well, come on, man, you know about that rake. And, had, the, had the little hand on it like that well, right there. Y'all remember that? Yeah, what he did, he took a spoon. And he get in front of the mic and he hit that break like that. Mm. I don't know if you know the song "Live It Up." Yeah, and it's in that song. It's in that song. And I I got a, a video on him where he would just do stuff with his mouth, like you know I used to say "Hoo." Now Marvin, I say "Hoo." I seen him do that in concert. Wow. So mm -hmm. when you when you sit down and you see these artists, 
I sit down and learn from them. I don't sit down and say, okay, I'm looking at all the people and the girls. And No, I'm looking You're at the You're taking the artist artists out. I'm, I'm checking the artists out. You know, he used to do stuff with his mouth like. Yeah. And you checking all that out. I check it out. I'm like, Marvin is off the chain. They missing and, it. And James did the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's notes that I can never hear that James <laughs> Brown did. He got the, mm -hmm. use, the uniquest holler and scream in anybody in show And it had a raspy mm -hmm. right. with and, it. And, and I'm like, man, I'm like, how you do that? You know, I'm, I'm still right today trying to learn some of James' licks. Mike, Michael who Jackson loved, highest, loved, loved James Brown, who too. Who has the highest pitch out of all of the old school artists that you can think of? Because you even Prince. It's, Prince has a very Prince, high Prince, pitch. Prince, might be Prince. Prince. It might be Prince, James, or either Philip Bailey. I don't know. Bailey. Who, the who, same reasons. Reasons. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Song. yeah that's who Stone yeah, Mecca. That he knew. That's who Stone Mecca. He, right. he was friends with him. And the Bee Gees, they was off the chain. Mm. So it's a lot of those kind of groups that really, really, I say same. Same, I yeah. Sing, you feel mm -hmm. what I'm yeah. saying? So it's a lot of them up there. There's about seven or eight of them that I give credit to. Because I love I, when people can I, hit I that. I can't let them get off it the show. It just gives me shivers. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, like the, I like, love it. They got one guy in The Temptations can do it. it. Uh, it's a guy in The Temptations can do it. It's one in the OJs can do it. Uh, I know uh, Marvin Gaye can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince can do it. Mike can do it. Not everybody. Uh, James Ryan certainly can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's They up there. You yeah. Mean all the greats. Do you think that um what... Houston seemed like an island, to be honest with you. And I'm, we about to wrap it up. But Houston, to me, it always seemed like it didn't seem like it, it's in Texas. But when it came down to the music and stuff, when you get somebody in Dallas that'll hit and it'll be a Dallas thing. Houston would have a Houston, Houston thing. thing. And that's about the only two. San Antonio, they would do it. But it wasn't it wasn't it was like Houston, Houston and that. But Dallas. mainly Houston. Houston. Houston like an island, to man. Me, to me, Houston catch on before the last people to catch on. <laughs> Why, I don't know, but that's what a talent is. Okay. Snoop will tell you that. I mean, there's a lot of major rappers that tell you, man, man you need to go. 50 Cent will tell you that. Houston. Lot. Houston got a ton of talent. In but it's just like you say, they're on the island. It's like they can't get out. <laughs> but it's why <laughs> Why it's not a Texas thing and not just a, it's the separation. Why is it just Houston or Dallas? Why is not they don't come together and become and, and, a Texas and, and thing. That's an opinion. Be, it need to be because that's the biggest thing on the map. Right. And this is what I like about Atlanta. They stick together. Oh, man, we go down there. Because it's see not it. even like it's a Georgia thing yeah, or it's, yeah, a, you know, it's a Atlanta oh, man, thing. And I'm giving shout out to Atlanta. They all got y'all shit together. They, they, they do. I, man, I'm telling you, I had some man. guys that down there wanted to do some stuff. And you know what they told me? They said, we'll do the music, but we want to write it. We want to produce it. We want to put it on the radio. We Everything want to get it out there, yeah. We want to put you in the magazines. We want to get you on some tools, and we want to make sure that you are up and running. Just do one song. Wow! Because they have reliable and people that's there. Exactly, and that's why they are moving. Yeah, they mm -hmm. work definitely together. Moving. I hate to say it, Atlanta stick together like the Mexicans do. So <laughs> no, I'm that's just, true. I'm, I'm just being real with <laughs> it's you. The you truth. Know, and I would love to go down there and work with some of those guys. You know what I'm saying? And in the future, I'm pretty sure probably gonna do it. Happen. But uh, yeah. Hey. Man, hey man, we love you, brother. Um, it, how can people get a hold of you if they're looking for you? Uh, just look on the internet. I tell everybody that, and they laugh. Everybody. Just look on there. And yeah, what's I'm, their name? Uh, on, uh, they look at Ronnie Spencer, uh, the legendary. You're on Instagram. Play. You're on I'm TikTok. On I'm, on, I'm on. I that part of the. <laughs> <laughs> She's TikTok. I'm, like, TikTok. TikTok. I'm gonna tell you, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just not really a social media guy. Never yeah. was. And my daughter handles all this stuff. You she, she, went, she went viral the other day on TikTok. Yeah. 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 She went viral You gotta the other get day. with it. Yeah, she, you gotta yeah. get with it. And it's it. just like I just, you know, my eyes are bad. I don't have time. I'm just like, man, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna do. It. And, and they get on me. If all my friends and partners. Well, I don't worry about that, that, man. So you're only on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You know, uh, as the leg yeah. as Ronnie as Spencer. Ronnie Spencer. The legendary, Spencer. the official, just Ronnie you, Spencer. You can, you can say the legendary Ronnie Spencer. <laughs> no, I'm saying what is what on is there? Your tag <laughs> on there. That's what I'm saying. They do it both. They man. already. Yeah, yeah, you can look it up and pop up. Pull up the legendary Ronnie Spencer. There I am. Just say pull up Ronnie Spencer. But my daughter got it hooked up through Facebook 
and everything is tagged Close. to it. Yeah, so that's when right. You, when you look me up at Facebook, you can get into everything. Yeah, man, I, I tell Once you. she got me on, I had You have clue. no idea, but that's good. She told us about the letters that when you was going through, a, uh, when they, you went away for a while, she wrote you a lot of songs and would send them to you. Oh, man. And she dude. said you wouldn't, you, you won't give them back. No, she just <laughs> no. I give them back, but she's still my music all the time. So by by she by she being my daughter, I just let her have it. I say, you know, you're younger than me. You're going out there, whatever in the studio you want, you can have it. Man, and she just took advantage of that. So I'm I'm glad because everything right now that have been touching here lately. Man, been I can, making I, radio. I love her, man. It's been you know people love it, and she's right now rapping rap rappers. I albums. seen the rap. I see she she get, she let me hear that uh uh the uh. Bun B uh, and the the front back. Yeah, man, I that. love that. And I, I got another song that Man Pimp did. What? Yeah, I got. I got to have that, man. I got about Don't two play, man. Ain't never put out. But now look, man, she got one of those and won't give it back to me. I wow. bet I wouldn't give it back to you either. <laughs> she, she, she performed it on the stage and they loved it. And wow. She, and then she passed me up. Say, Daddy, you ain't getting that one back. Wow. <laughs> I said, Okay, you can have it. Say, yeah. man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love yeah. you, brother. Yes, sir. I love y'all for having me. And I love y'all. <laughs> Check it, man. Say, man, we love you, brother. Ronnie, Ronnie Spencer. Hey. We're going to be coming to Houston. Mm -hmm, very uh, soon. We're we going to be linking up with you again when we come You're down welcome. there. Cause welcome. Because I, 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 I want to do something. I want to do something for you. So I will be coming down there to put our stuff up mm -hmm. there. Okay, cool. So we're yeah, going to come I down. I, be, I told uh, Chose and uh, Black Card, Black Steve O. I done, told, I done linked in with a lot of them down there. I'm going to come set up. I want to do something down there. Yeah, man. Y'all come to the studio, man. I'll mm -hmm. come through. Maybe me and you can do something on a song. Hey, I'll get on there. And you get your wife. All she got to do is scream. And that's all right. I, 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 I can scream. I can't sing. I can scream, though. That's, all, that's, that's good. That's all we need. <laughs> he can sing. I do a little bit. Man, oh, man hey, but I ain't, no run, I ain't no run as yeah. And It ain't got to be. Yeah. I want you to be you, and I'm going to be me, and we're going to make a classic. I sure will they come do they, it. They didn't say no one keeps sweating run out did a song hey, but they talked about that's right. sweat, yeah. but, <laughs> but hey sweat something else he gonna whine and get his done you know he what I'm saying yeah he gonna get his done I, so I think I, yeah sweat we went to his concert and I heard a lot of people I'm not going to go there. A lot of people said, man, he too old to be doing all of that now. Man, he doing he his thing, man. Cool. That boy doing his thing. Yeah, right. He whined better and, than anybody. He be see, crying and whining. Yeah, man, but <laughs> see, this, that, that comes back, he is on the artist. Man, mm -hmm. I, I ain't going to lie. He's he got a Some of his music got me through back in the days. Yeah, I ain't going right. to lie. I you. made a lot of babies back in the day. Uh, yeah, well, I ain't going to baby off the nigga music. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. We Thank love you, you bro. <laughs> love you too. Man, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Hog 101. And we out.